And welcome to KUAM's Decision 2014. I'm Jeff Luan, host of the show. I'd like to introduce uh, this morning, of course, the uh, producer of The Buzz, of course, uh, J.C. Kim Conception. Also, like to welcome uh, in studio this morning, uh, candidate to delegate to Washington, D.C., not other than Democrat candidate um, Matthew Artero. How Thank are you doing this morning? Doing good. Thank you for having me. Good. Half a day and half a day Guam. Good morning, Guam. Yeah. Well, anyways, actually, this has been recorded well. You can watch a rebroadcast or a broadcast of this uh, this evening on local channel 2 at 7.30. Likewise, this will be available on our KUAM YouTube channel by about 10.30, 11 o'clock this morning. This also will be rebroadcast Monday afternoon, 3 p.m. on KUAM TV 8. And it will be highlighted tonight on um, our KUAM prime time with Sabrina Sasa Matanani and, and Jason Sala, so you have an opportunity to, to, to see that uh, preview there, um, uh, Matt. Anyways, go ahead and tell the people of Guam again your name. Of course, you're a Democrat, and uh, I, I'm not going to ask what side of the ballot because you're a Democrat. <laughs> of course, uh, there, there's two of you running for, for, um, for that office, but tell everybody again your platform. Thank you very much. My name is Matthew Artero from Agania Heights, um, son of Tony uh, Torres Artero and Millie Scambaluri Artero. I am a disabled veteran, not, not combat, I'm not a combat veteran, and I'm not retired. Um, after that, I worked mostly in real estate, and that has allowed me to experience and see how today's economy is uh, hurting Guam's people. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> and so I um, um, have this uh, focus on education because that's what's going to allow Guam to put more, the most money, higher education is going to put the most money into the people of Guam's hands, mm -hmm. allow them to deal with their medical issues, allow them to have the happiest lives possible with their families, lower poverty, lower crime. Mm -hmm. And so I want to work as Guam's delegate to help our schools rank among the best and help college to be more affordable to even more people. Um, in Washington, D.C., they have a federally funded um, voucher program for low-income people that allows them to send their children to the private school of their choice. And um, those children then end up having a higher graduation rates, higher college attendance rates. I'd like to see that for Guam. Um, here on Guam, um, oh, all of Guam's issues are very important to me because I see how that affects Guam's ability to supply our people with an even better education so they can get the highest paying jobs possible. And um, EITC, for example, is not fun federally funded here on Guam. But when our people move to the states, then they get federally funded EITC. So I see the federal government as actually hurting themselves in that. If they would help our schools be even better, it's, go it's always going to be cheaper to help people get their college right here in Guam when they're still living with mom and dad. So when they go to states, they're in higher paying jobs, getting little to no EITC. The federal government would save a lot of money by helping us with the unfunded mandates. <laughs> You know, you're speaking my language. You sure not, you're not a Republican? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, anyway, no, no, I mean, you, you talked about Vulture, we had, uh, Vulture, Vulture and, and, and earlier we were talking just about that. I said, because I, when we were in the, in the legislature, there's a few of us, of course, that were, that were pushing the vouchers, the system in the legislature. And, um, well, we know that that didn't happen, so mm -hmm. we compromised and we, we, we got uh, the, the, the charter at, at this point. But anyway, thank you very much uh, for that. But let me ask you some questions there yes, in regards to this. And we'll concentrate, of course, on, on federal issues because... And that's the office that you're 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 running for. Um, I'm sure you've you've heard this even before the the campaign started and say, hey Matt, <clears throat> you're going up against a giant. <laughs> you're going sure. up against a giant. You obviously have the reason why you decided. Is obviously there there are there are probably gaps there to, that you're probably not as contented as as the direction we're going. What prompted Matt again to to say, hey, wait a minute, I'll go ahead and take on that giant and 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 try to seek the people's vote to be able to get into to the, uh, the Washington delegates uh, position? Um, it's probably having become a father and uh, to today's economy being so different than what we grew up with. And we're so used to the delegate race time and time again, the same issues over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. and, and now we see that, um, that uh, like I can remember being in high school, I go out and get a, even if the job was minimum wage, um, that was pretty good. Um, as far as me having enough spending money, being able to buy myself a motor vehicle, maintain it well, and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, but now, if you go buy a, a gallon of gas, it's, it's well over half what you're making per hour. Mm -hmm. And so the, the issues are a lot different with technology and globalization. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to see um, this education and higher paying jobs added to the, the delegate race. And, it, and I see um, some of the potential candidates for president mm -hmm. are trying to make, make these things an issue. Um, it hasn't quite caught on the, in the media yet. I hope it does because I believe it'll be good for Guam. 
because they're saying, hey, we got to take care of our people. It's actually going to be better for the economy. It's actually going to be help the federal government debt come down. Mm -hmm. So we really, whoever we send, jumps on that and helps the government debt come down, helps uh, um, our nation take better care of its people, like the very first paragraph of our Constitution says is the purpose of our country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then um, that's just going to help go and get more federal funding. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask you this as well, is, is because uh, a lot of the campaign of the, of the incumbent, of course, in the past, they said, well, you know, having seniority is very important in Congress. And we, 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 we know that, okay? Yes. And so you're, again, running against a senior person who's made connections over, over, the, uh, over the years, of course. But as you said, you know, you, there are some issues here that haven't come to light. I mean, uh, presidential candidates are just now starting to climb around to, to, to some of these things that mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're talking about. So, again, that, that being said, how do you intend, I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to break this, this I guess, um, um, good old boy, <laughs> good old boy uh, uh, organization, basically, yes, yes. in regards to seniority and all that. The, the, the situation that we're, you're, you're going into, though, is yeah, you're, gonna, you're, you're a non-voting delegate, Okay, you, should, you have the opportunity to serve. You're a non-voting delegate. You don't, you're, you're not necessarily have a voting committee unless they decide that, that yes. they're, they're going to they give you that. So you're not going to have, I mean, it, you're, you're not going to have colleagues coming up to you basically mm -hmm. and saying, trying to barter I, for votes. To try to barter for votes, you know, and, and you really at this point have nothing to, to contribute as a delegate, not, not as an individual, sure. but, but as, a, as a delegate in the position that you hold, um, you, you're coming in as a, as, as a, be a freshman, okay, mm -hmm. and you'll fight <laughs> yes. a, a freshman, and not holding any key committees. Uh, so going in there, you know that, Yes. okay, you know that. What will be different then? So you hit the nail on the head when you use that word individual, and so I have to bring my individual talents to bear. And this is where my real estate experience comes mm -hmm. in. You can say all those same things like, what good are you? You're not the, you're not the owner, you're not the buyer, you're not the seller or the buyer, but you, you approach, when I was a licensed broker, you approach um, either of them and try to see, and help, not, 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 help, not try to see, help them see what's good for them in this. Mm -hmm. And I would take those skills there, and like what I said in my intro where it's like, you think you're, you're, um, you're helping yourself by uh, having this unfunded liabilities on Guam, but you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and you're Peter, because mm -hmm. our people are all going over there, mm -hmm. and then you're paying them federal funded anyway, mm -hmm. and you're not getting a higher caliber of people as you would if you helped us have better mm -hmm. schools here on Guam. Um, so for example, seven to eight babies are born on Guam a day. Um, of course, we're not creating seven to eight jobs a day for them. And the birth rate is higher on Guam than it is in the USA, mm -hmm. but our population growth rate is lower on Guam than mm -hmm. is USA. So that tells you, yes, they're all coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, all you're doing is delaying that. Sure. And you delayed it to an age now where they're out of their parents' house and it's harder for them to go to college. So they're going to be on EITC and all those other federal programs mm -hmm. a lot longer in their lives. Mm -hmm. Get that funding here on Guam, so when they do go, they're going to be on it a lot shorter or not be on it at all mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. go to the States because they're coming. Sure. You can't stop mm -hmm. that and it's going to affect your state. Well, oh, one of the things, uh, again, with the EITC is that, yes, it's applicable here to us, but because of years back when we ba basically broke that mold and we started paying for it, that basically, you know, as some people will say, that kind of did not give us the argument to go back to, to Congress and say, hey, this is an unfunded mandate. You, mm -hmm. This was bestowed on us, and it was an un, uh, and that was the arguments years yeah, years years ago in the non-payment of EITC was that it was unfunded mandate. But uh, in a previous administration, I think uh, staffers succumbed to the, to the fact to 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 start paying it, and so we are again the ones that are are uh, are burdened with that with that cause. So how now do we put that argument? forward now and they say, well, you know, um, it was unfunded mandate, so there we, therefore we took care of it. So how now do we present um, an argument in support now of getting a uh, federal funding as opposed to continuing with the local funding side? Well, well, my argument is that it actually hurts the people in the states because our people are going there. And so if you want us to be able to fund our schools better, to have better education, and if you want us to make our university more affordable, mm -hmm. Because another thing Guam struggles with is um, our top three industries, hospitality and leisure, mm -hmm. hotel, um, retail tr trade, and service sector, are also the top three industries in the nation for minimum wage and part-time work. 
So of course people are having difficulty affording college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we're still having children. You know, of course people are having difficulty investing for their future. So they have to have children to take care of themselves when they get old mm -hmm. or when they get sick. Mm -hmm. And so, so this is the reality. And, 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 it, and it's coming to you. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, it's been coming to you for decades. Mm -hmm. And so the, we need to change uh, Congress's thinking of, of Guam. You know, it's a territory, it says here right in the Constitution, we're, we're a possession, it's for them to dispose of as they see fit. Um, but because it hurts you, you're much better off thinking of Guam as a county. Mm -hmm. you, know, you wouldn't um, deprive a county in your state of better education. You, you make education uh, distributed equally to the entire state. Mm -hmm. And because we're connected, we're all U.S. citizens, you can't um, bar us like you do the Compact or Free Association citizens. You can turn that off whenever you want. Mm -hmm. we're, we're coming and, and you're hurting yourself. Now, let me ask you this. It, you know, was, I think it was last week, week, week before that, basically, where the, um, of course, this amicus brief, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with, with that, uh, you know, and uh, the Obama administration basically replied in his amicus brief re re regarding uh, U.S. citizenship as well. So going there as U.S. citizens, um, now they can basically, I mean, we've always known that. Now they can put it in our face and say, well, you know what, we gave it to you. We can take it back at any time. And likewise, um, and and... We can subdue you from any um, any committee any uh, committees, and yeah, we may give you a desk down here to, down the hall, and that's what Congress can do based mm -hmm. on uh, based on uh, again their amicus brief, and we've known based on on on, on our citizenship granted through the the uh, the or the Organic Act. So going in there with that in mind, knowing that because now it was it's ink to paper on that yes. we are solid second-class citizens at this point, knowing that, uh, and, and it's been said, and they can now say, well, the administration said this, so go deal with them. Are we at a disadvantage now because now there's, there's ink to paper on that? <laughs> um, well, that ink to paper referred to other ink to paper. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe the fact that it's ink to paper is not the disadvantage. It's really going to be how the currently elected members of Congress feel and think about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, so maybe China building up its navy and flexing its muscle in our area, maybe that's going to help us uh, in that Congress won't be so quick to, okay, you second class citizens, uh, mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. do with you what we want. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can use that to our advantage mm -hmm. to um, get uh, more rights. Mm -hmm. Now, now uh, again, talking about newer members of Congress, now there are quite a few newer members of Congress. Um, there are a lot, I mean, there are more uh, members of con actually, I think the majority of the members of Congress now are are not uh, World War II vets mm -hmm. or were a, a part of of, uh, of of that era. Uh, so there are still issues from way back that haven't been resolved. War reparations is is is, is one of them, of course. And then our our political destiny, uh, compact impact reimbursements, uh, Medicaid, Social Security, th things of that nature. Now these are now I know you're going down a, a different road and things again that that uh, that we can avail ourselves to, but there are still um, unresolved yes. uh, um, situations here. Your thoughts on war reparations? Um, you know all the attempts by by previous uh, Congress uh, uh, yes. uh, folks were there have gone to I mean have not been successful. Recently, there was an editorial by 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 a journalist that said, "Hey, let's give it up. Look at uh, we've been receiving all these grants over the years. We should just just move on, and it's not worth our time." Your thoughts on that? Um, is that is that something that? Would war reparation be be a, a old school thought and shouldn't be pursued? Or, or your thoughts? Um, it needs to be pursued regardless of the success of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, just because of our conversation we just had leading into it, the second class mm -hmm. citizen thing. So we definitely need to remind Congress over and over again, as long as we have that second class, until we've made our, our citizenship uh, permanent, um, whichever way Guam votes, is this will, bringing it up only helps us at this point, even if we're not successful in it. And so we can't, uh, we can't neglect that. And I would say war reparations is probably the, when I started my campaign, is, it's probably the one issue I lost the most sleep over. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, every delegate before me hasn't gotten it. Um, it's certainly something that I cannot promise I will succeed in. But because our political status is still left to be determined, mm -hmm. um, that important part of our history 
needs to be constantly reiterated. And like you said, it's all new members of Congress that maybe weren't mm -hmm. even born during the war, like myself. And so the not just the strategic importance, but the historical mm -hmm. relationship and the and the emotional relationship and the ties and how mm -hmm. they're so strong and and uh, no, so we can't give it up at this time. Have, have you had the opportunity again to to look at all that has been presented over the years by 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 former delegates and current delegate uh, as to as to maybe how you're going to possibly try to pursue this now? Maybe that hasn't been pursued before. I mean, have you had the opportunity to, to do that? Because everything it looks like everything that we've done, we've everything even, we've been tried. We, well, I mean, even to the point where we're going to pay for it ourselves, right? right. <laughs> and, and they don't want us to do that. So, uh, are, are you? I mean, do you do you are are you looking at something that maybe this is another entity that we, we can pursue? Is there something different that you're going to go after at this point? I, I have not come up with something different, although I have been studying it. Mm -hmm. And um, the things that have uh, stood out to me the most in studying it was when Underwood was uh, our congressman and he was getting the review commission uh, passed. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, former congressman Ben Bloss was testifying for it in the mm -hmm. Senate and mm -hmm. he was pointedly asked who's going to qualify for these payments, you know, mm -hmm. and, and said he, and he understood that, um, that that's a, a very precedent setting, uh, um, issue. If, uh, people that have already passed away are going to, are their heirs going to get it, even though they weren't around during mm -hmm. the war? Mm -hmm. Um, because when the Japanese Americans that were interned, when they got it, it was very clear the first, I think it might've been the first paragraph in that law that said, sure. if you're deceased at the time of this is passed, mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. heirs don't get it. Mm -hmm. If you're deceased after it's passed, then the, then your heirs get it. And so, Congressman Blas said he, in his testimony, said he understood that this would be precedent setting and it would make him unpopular on Guam, but he didn't see that it could get past the Congress if it was, um, if, if the heirs were heirs, included. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, there's that, and then the, what, what happened with the Japanese Americans, and, and of course they also took decades to get theirs, and that was over a, a billion dollars for sure, them. Sure, sure, sure. And so, if we now get it for, our deceased, um, that I believe that's what Congress's concern is. Are those deceased Japanese Americans going to come back and say, "Hey, what about us?" And is that going to be another five hundred million dollars? I think I think one of the the things too that they were hesitant about is 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 if they they do this. Well, now will the the African Americans come back and 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 have, uh, uh, I guess, slave reparation? You know, mm -hmm. from, from from years back, and they come back now and and claim that since the the, the government at that time, of course, uh, um, you know, just looked aside, of course, as, as slavery was, was was happening in in the United States. So at least that was the argument that they were they were telling us. So that they, to them, they said this can open up a whole can of worms. If they did that, but you know, president had already been set. We're not the one setting that presidents, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe different entities in regards to the deceased, maybe so. But you know, in regards to war reparations, we're not setting new presidents. I mean, it's it, it has been set uh, in in, mm -hmm. in the past. Now, let me let me, let me uh, ask you this uh, situation here: um, the compact impact reimbursement or lack thereof, okay, uh, to to the amount that. Uh, that it should be reimbursed. The federal government says, "Hey, look, you got to give us a bill on an annual basis. Show us, uh, show us what is owed, uh, and uh, we'll reimburse you for that." Basically, <clears throat> over the years, uh, you have now not only territories but states now that uh, that are, um, are are claiming. Wait a minute, now we got these folks coming from these places, and <clears throat> they're tasking our, our taxpayers, and 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 so you got, you got to pay up, and so they are. But unfortunately, they're taking out of our coffers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, we're, we're dividing that up now, what's coming to us. Most of them are, are coming to us. But we're not getting reimbursed at the rate that they should be, although we're sending in the bill. Yes. Now, they, you know, the, the federal government is telling us, we're not putting it in to form. We're not doing it right. We're not doing the paperwork right. And so we said, well, how do you do it? Show us. Mm -hmm. um, as of late, the, the governor's office, particularly the legal counsel, Arthur Clark, had gone to Hawaii thinking that they got it together. Um, we had since found out that we were more advanced in our paperwork, and mm -hmm. they hadn't started. So that being said, they tell us it's it, it, how we're doing it is wrong. We're not taking things these things in consideration, but they don't want to tell us how to do it the proper way. So to me, this is just another thing that, again, because we weren't on the table. How do we get to the table, and, and how do we get the federal government to live up again to one of the things, this contract that we had nothing to do with to live up to
to that contract's, uh, I mean, you know how it is when you sign a contract. Yes. <laughs> you got to live up to, to what you sign, mm -hmm. and likewise, everybody else has to. So how do we get them to, to, to fulfill the contract like each and every one of us who has contract we're dealing with? <laughs> well, the way you put it there sounds like a, a due process issue which requires things to be spelled out properly. And when you find out, hey, Hawaii says they did it better, but then you go and find out, says actually that that may not be the case. So, and then the immediate recourse there would be the court. But as far as the, the delegate goes, like you said, you're, you're not on the table, you don't have a vote. Um, but you would use whatever uh, powers you have to get as much information as possible to help your local government make their case. If they have to go to court, they have to go to court. But the other thing is, you certainly wouldn't take that stance where um, you would join the federal government in blaming the local government, hey, your paperwork's not good enough. Uh, because even if it was, we already know the funding still wouldn't be enough when it mm -hmm. gets divided amongst everybody. Mm -hmm. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to be crying foul that it's short. Mm -hmm. So the delegate has to join with all those other states in increasing the, the funding that is then being divided up. Mm -hmm. Now, the you know part of the part of the compact impact agreement is that uh, you know felons and and, and, and people who, who are just not right and doing proper in the community and I'm just not just it's not because you just don't like somebody mm -hmm. but somebody illegally doing some things and being convicted and things like that we 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 have an opportunity I mean they, they they can be deported your stance on that because we haven't seemed to to really have I mean we have some um, we have deported there have been deportations done but in in general it looks like we're, we're really hesitant to to do what really I mean is right to do as as, as given in the contract. If, yes, I mean, if you're yes. if you're an undesirable based on 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 the community's undesired activities that you have done, then you got to get out of here. Yeah, and um, one, one one thought came to my mind. I, of course, I don't know how it would be received, but as long as you recognize you you have this res federal responsibility for deportation mm -hmm. and for um, reimbursement, compact impact funds, why not just send them to a federal facility? Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to go through all the hassle of having to get reimbursed or having to do this extra paperwork. They're in your federal facility. If, if you want to deport them, fine. If you're going to keep them for their, the term, fine. But at least that would uh, cut out a lot of the middle work. So, so basically send them to a federal facility off island because we, we basically have a, a federal holding tank basically here mm -hmm. at, at this point. So you want to send them to a federal facility and you're saying a federal facility that is probably outside of Guam, right? And that they would... Uh, and that would they, encourage the federal sure. government to, okay, we better step up these deportations. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you see they stepped it up for all the mm -hmm. tens of thousands of children that were coming yeah. from mm -hmm. um, Central America. Sure. Now, that being said, a federal facility... Um, Hospital reimbursement, you know, healthcare reimbursement for for the immigrants that come here. We we we've, we've asked this for years. The the old naval hospital that has been since demolished, right? We're mm -hmm. saying, hey, why couldn't they save that? Maybe rehab that to, to not only to to fit the, the veterans' needs, but also maybe these these uh, these immigrants that come here. Um, what are your thoughts on that, and what would you do to help us with that reimbursement, or or even as a fed, like you said, a federal facility? Um. That I don't I don't see that the military would ever agree to it. I mean, they don't need, the only veterans that go to the Navy hospital are, are the ones that are are fully retired mm -hmm. and and then um, when uh, or or I I get to go there, but it's only if the the, the local VA clinic sends me there for a specific blood test or mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. But if uh, they need me to go see a specialist or something, it's it, it can be someone out in town. So. Um, they're not even doing it for all the veterans, so I don't see that they would do it for the, the compact uh, immigrants. So, but yes, the, the delegate would fight for whatever we can fight for. Now, also the Gov Guam over the years in regards to conversion and conversion over to, to Medicare and Social Security, uh, um, again, benefits. So what would you do, you go in there to, to try to get that for our Gov Guam employees? As conversion to you know over to Social Security as well. I mean, we see our situation here with our retirement fund. That yes, <laughs> to be desired, I guess, right? We all we all have to. When we're just looking at the numbers, we all have to agree that 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 is the, the delegate needs to do that. And because that's something that just recently started, mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard the arguments from the federal side against it yet. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it's something that has to be pursued. And um, an idea that just came to me as we were talking again about the the compact. Uh, people with uh, the, the medical. Mm -hmm. Like in 96, I believe it was that uh, Congress passed a law that they don't get Medicaid anymore. 
but um, they are they are doing something but so perhaps something needs to be set up for them specifically so that um, there would be an immediate way to go apply just like uh, someone comes in with Medicaid or um, a medically indigent there's immediate way to go apply for those funds mm -hmm. set something up for them so there's an immediate way to go apply because mm -hmm. hospitals need to get reimbursed now sure. not not at the end of a fiscal year or something sure sure now I'll ask you this <clears throat> military 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 build up we we've seen the, that number go from eight ten thousand now it's dwindled down three four five thousand um we look at the preferred side at uh, once uh, was was the was, was pocket that's still on the table but that's not the preferred site now retidian is a, is a preferred site uh, now <clears throat> some of the, <clears throat> excuse me some of the, the landowners have called actually the the the, uh, the station here and said there's not truth to the to 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 what the federal government is saying is that we got reimbursed now maybe some fa families got reimbursed but this one family had called and said we never got we never we never got paid as a matter of fact uh, my my grandfather never accepted the money so I'm saying if they never accepted the money, you know how things are. I mean, they, I mean the government, the government probably would have put it in a in a trust account with a bearing a bearing interest. Uh, at this point, uh, they said at one point there was a family member that was given a check. That family member went to cash a check, only to find out that the government it was insufficient funds. So I think even moving further before you get to whether or not it should be here, I think we have to determine whether or not. Who legally owns that? Because if it was a taken without just compensation, it's illegal. <laughs> it's yes. illegal. So, what would you do again to to get to the point where really who who owns this? And if it if if it because they didn't want to receive the check, but it was given, then show us where the account is at that was bearing bearing interest. Yeah. Um, this this is a having worked in real estate. Um, you become used to hearing a lot of things, and then when you check on them, they're not always not accurate. always accurate. Yeah. So that that would be the first step um, because I I would refrain from answering that question, even whether it's a government issue or just a issue between two private mm -hmm. landowners, mm -hmm. because always go and research everything sure. first. Because when you know what you're actually dealing mm -hmm. with, that's mm -hmm. when you can say, okay, here here's what's actually on the table. So this will d tell you what your options are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to get that documentation. First. And, and that's what, you know, for us to move on to be able to be, get a solid answer, I want to see paperwork really for sure whether there were, there's reimbursement or not. And if there's not, then, then it's an illegal taking. But if it is, we want to see that paperwork, the, the trail that, that yes. led up to, to that. As you said, you know, sometimes I say, hey, this is my property only to, to research it. And I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when did you make your lot bigger than, than that? But uh, anyway, that, that being said, Again, uh, you're asking the people for the, uh, the people of Guam to vote for for Matt Artero to be their next delegate to, delegate to Congress. The votes of the people of Guam are the only thing basically that, that are Guam. You're going to become a federal employee, so that may change things because it's like, uh, well, who's paying you? And that's mm -hmm. what some of the, the the critics basically will say is, well, you know, you're coming to us for votes, but really you're a federal employee, so you're going to have to be probably more subservient to your federal employee, well, to that well, federal paycheck. Well, well one uh, man from Marizzo and I, his name escapes me right now, but I did write it down, um, said to me while I was on the campaign trail is, one thing that he did in his career was if he didn't see himself advancing in five years, he would, he would change, move on to something else, because mm -hmm. he's obviously not cut out for that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was a really good advice, something I could teach my son, but also I could use in my life. So if I haven't made enough headway in X amount of years, it's time to change me. Or you just bow out, right? Yes, yeah, definitely. It's like, well, it's obvious to me, I, you know. <laughs> you tried it. You know, I here's what it. I experienced. Um, you got some ideas, please come in and help our people. <laughs> there, there we go. Anyway, Matt, you know, thank you very much for coming in here. And uh, give, 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 well, I tell you, give the people again the opportunity. Tell them again who you are, everything they need to know, and your, your DNA and all that, right? <laughs> and what number you are in the ballot and... Uh, one of the first things you do, should the people of Guam give you the opportunity uh, to to excel or to succeed in this primary and move on to the general election, please. Uh, Matthew Artero from Agania Heights. I'm number two on the Democratic side of the ballot for Congress. And what I understand, the first thing someone must do uh, when they get to Congress is read all the rules. I understand that book is really thick. <laughs> and um, that's what's going to let you know what you can and can't do and when you can and can't do it. 
and then then that question can be answered better when you see what's actually on the calendar over there at the time. Yeah, there we go. Again, you're number two on the number Democrat two on the Democrat side. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And you, and remember, you can't cross. Okay, you can't cross at least not in the primary. Otherwise, you're going your ballot your ballot is going to be thrown out, not counted. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank uh, you for having me. Uh, good luck in this uh, upcoming uh, primary. Of course, uh, hope to be able to talk to you, of course, again in the, the general election. Matthew Otero, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can watch a uh, broadcast of this tonight on local channel 2 at 7.30. Likewise, the KUAM's YouTube channel that should be available at 10.30, 11 o'clock this morning. It'll be highlighted on KUAM primetime tonight with Sabrina Salas-Matanani and Jason Salas at 6 to 6.30. And rebroadcast Monday afternoon about 3 p.m. on KUAM TV 8. Monday morning at 8.15 to about 8.45 as well, we'll be joined by another delegate candidate uh, to, of course, Washington, will be joined uh, by uh, Republican candidate Margaret Metcalf. That's uh, Monday morning, 8.15 to 8.30 on the buzz, on the candidate buzz right here on Isla 63. Thank you very much. Uh, talk to you on Monday.